Hello everyone and welcome back to Experience Point Starfinder, your favorite all queer cast Starfinder podcast. I'm Steph, your resident chief medical officer, here with a few announcements to kick things off. As always, we would be grateful if you would take the time to give us a five-star rating on iTunes or wherever you consume podcasts. It would mean the world to us and it helps new listeners to find us. We hope you are as excited about our show as we are and will recommend us to your friends, your community, and anyone who loves tabletop RPGs and, well, just about anybody. Exciting news, we're going to PodCon. Well, Kelrick and Kenny are, to be more specific. That's at Cormelon and at Punderdrone on Twitter. The rest of us will be there in spirit. It's in Seattle, Washington on January 19th and 20th, 2019. Come say hi if you're in the area. This episode of Experience Points, Solomon checks in on the crew of the ASS Roseate, Absco, Mordax, and Angus enjoy the sights, and Absco teaches the crew the ways of Abadar. Coming up on episode 31, A Penny for Your Faith. This week we have our first promo for another podcast. If you want to hear genuine accents instead of the terrible, terrible, terrible one I do for Angus, you should absolutely check out Modified Role Podcast. Their promo is at the end of our show, so stick around to learn more about them. Greetings, adventure hookers, and welcome back to Experience Points, your favorite queer Starfinder real play podcast. I am your host in GMU, and as always, I am joined today by our fabulous cast. Hello, I'm Kelrick. I play Angus. Hi, I'm Britt. I play Mordak. Hi, I'm Kenny, and I play Absco Cash. Hello, I'm Steph, and I play Eos Nabari. And speaking of Absco Cash, I believe they have uh, our recap for today. Take it away, Absco. Security pilot log. Time spent on the Burning Archipelago has been confusing, uh, emotionally speaking. After being released from incarceration, we needed to meet back up with Fuego in the Brass Bazaar. We met with a shadowy Abalonian Anasite priest who, for the record, has my respect. They had a port a port with Silverblade that resulted in coordinates to Avalon, hunting down the origins of Solomon, nay, 18, Eve, and the First Ones. I had a moment with Aronson that I felt was appropriate, but provoked some emotional response that I still don't quite understand. Should I avoid these in the future? This might require more assessment. Now to feel a comms message from Solomon. Indeed. We pick up with Absco and Angus in the ready room as flashing on the vid screen says incoming call Solomon. So I turn to Angus and say, before we let them on, as soon as they come on, we tell them to hold and then we bring in our other crew members. Okay, sure. I mean, if they're reaching out to us, then I'll immediately (laughs) calm Mordax and Eos. Mordax, Eos. I need you to come to my ready room right now. We have Solomon on the line. Oh, okay. I've already cut off comms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fair enough. Not, I need you to do this. All right. And I turn to Abs, go. Okay, let's go. Turn on the comms. And there sits Solomon, who opens their mouth. Jump in, Absco. Yeah. And so Absco says, oh, Hi, hold please, and then pushes like the pause on the comms. I wait for 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 Ask Solomon to just overwrite immediately. I don't hold. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! You you see because the the way you paused it is Solomon cannot see or hear you, and you've muted Solomon, but you can still see Solomon, and you see Solomon sit back in their chair, and their face contorts in what seems to be an approximation of raising an eyebrow before they settle in their chair, looking around. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And that's when Eos walks in from the med bay. (laughs) I wish Um. everyone else could see (laughs) Mew. Looking down to the left and to the right, gazing up real dramatically, just kind of waiting. <laughs> it's awesome. So I think that probably what Mordax did is ask Silverblade to sit tight. And because she's trying real hard, uh, because, you know, Silverblade kind of slows her down a little bit. She's just going to 
Okay. Uh, and leaves Silverblade in engineering. So she's going to show up. <laughs> Uh, unknown to you, Silverblade turns around in engineering as soon as you're gone and just hands on, on his hips and he begins pointing at people and things to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's been spending way too much time around bra. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> so you get there and everyone is standing there around this view screen looking at Solomon, looking around the room. So are, are we all in position? Well... Now or never. And then I unpause the conversation. S hi. Solomon. Solomon keeps looking around. Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh, hello. Yes. Hi. How are you? you? Want to, we're, we're, we're present. How are you? Let's 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 go for. I'm well. Street. I'm well. Sure. Why, uh, sure. why did you call? No. No. We did not call. No. I call. Oh yes. No. You kept me waiting so long. I forgot. I called you. <laughs> I just smile. I see you're on Avalon. That is true. Yes. Hi. Are you on Abalon? Do you have uh, Do you have clues as to the whereabouts of the adventure hook? We are tracking down where Eve is as we speak. We have oh, here. Could you uh... interesting information? Oh, really? What kind of information? There were some silver kobolds who apparently worship Eve as a deity and say that she has been around for a very, very long time. And so it seems reasonable that Abalon which deals with all kinds of gods, would be able to help us track down more information on who this person is. Angus, I feel like that. Diplomacy check. Diplomacy? Unless... Diplomacy is great. No, I'll take Probably diplomacy. Yeah, it's, it's not quite bluff. No. Yeah. Oh, it's, not, yeah, it's not quite a bluff. Like Very well, carefully worded. Oh, be, because... Not, yeah. true. And that's why I'm letting you roll your diplomacy. All right, so I'm going to do that, and I get a... This plus one d six, so yes. <laughs> yep. So a thirty two. Thirty two total. This just rolls off of your tongue, and Solomon looks a little bit disgruntled. I'm not sure that's the most efficient direction to go, but I mean, if it's getting you somewhere, I guess go ahead. Well, oh, by the way, uh, whatever happened to my ship? Well. I did mention the kobolds, did I not? Yes. Oh, good. Yes, so, you, you so did. So allow me to explain. Absco, our dear pilot, plotted a course that took us into an asteroid field, which caused it to be... Angus, I'll just say it. We took a detour to the vast that didn't work out so well for us, and it really... We lost the shift <sighs> engine. Yep, yep, and uh, the ship kind of uh, got really damaged, and so you know then the, it the got cobalt. Out. Yeah, but let's get not get off track. We're, you were about to tell us where you think our direction should be taking us, and obviously we are interested in any help we can get to get this adventure hook back from the the thief who took it from us. Obviously, I would think so, considering you trapped my ship. Accidents happen. <laughs> He's just picturing the biggest <laughs> smiles, just like... <laughs> Angus is over here just like gleaming, you know, used car salesman. <laughs> Accidents happen. We're good. I do hope there was insurance. <sighs> <laughs> Solomon appears to be perhaps what you would consider exasperated or no. a, a, an approximation thereof. We should have used Phaedra as a, a, a red herring. Oh, well, Phaedra had to, and, and Kira left us, so they needed the ship. So we, we, we went another direction. <laughs> Alas, too late. But Solomon, I don't know, ways of John goes, I don't really have anything, you know, any other better directions. I'm trusting you to find this, this hook. And we they look up and they look it. around the table and they go, those two aren't the same. Pointing at Eos and Mordax. And I look at them and I'm thinking, and I say, no, I don't believe you dated either of these, no. <laughs> no. Speaking of, where is Phaedra? I haven't been able to get a hold of her for uh, several weeks now. Well, given how you ghosted her, I don't see why. Oh, we are snarky as fuck. <laughs> oh, oh but, just... plus. <laughs> Go ahead. Eos is just trying to keep like a straight face and not just be like, uh huh, bitch. Like, really? Like, are Solomon's you eyes get right wide now? as as they focus directly on Absco. 
Fade in the background. Fade in the background. Fade in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Camouflage into the chair. <laughs> no, uh, so no, actually, Absco like actually feels pretty safe where they're at, and um, they say. Well, I'm sure that if you want to mend a broken heart, you can find them on Castorville. Kira and Phaedra both had to to go as you are, I'm certain aware, a war broke out on Kira's home planet, and she felt that her skills were more necessary there. But Absco and I are powering forward to make sure that we can get this adventure hook, and along the way we have recognized that the two of us alone are probably not going to be able to take on Eve. And so we've brought some companions. Solomon looks down at a, a data pad and goes, is that a, about 150 companions, give or take? Well, as you said, we did lose a ship. And you know we are very resourceful. That's why I hired you. Oh, good. I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> well, let me know if there's any progress. And with that, the screen just goes blank. Bloop. Solomon has hung up on you. Absco. Make sure that there is no hook left in our system. Mordax, I'd like you to work with me to make sure that there's nothing in our computers. Absco, just make sure that it's actually hung up and gone. Uh, I guess that would be a computer's check. Hi. There are computers for me as well. Angus assists. Nice. I've got a 30. All right. So with the 30 on your computer's check, of course there's a hook left in your system. <laughs> You find no fewer than three different worms trying to worm their way into your system and uh, root out mm -hmm. everything in there. I think what Mordex would do is explain this to Absco, being that they are the security person. And that is um, when Absco, who rolled yeah. a natural one to get a knot I mean, to hang up the phone, <laughs> yep, <laughs> comes over the intercom. Cursing at the phone because he can't figure out how to hang it up. There's too many buttons. Awesome. And they're not labeled. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this ship. It's a little bit too big. Well, this is why I just ignore all of that stuff. All those buttons are just really, really complicated. So I just loop into everything with my rig here. And I just, you know, bypass all that stuff. And then I can do it using the buttons that I'm familiar with. But um, oh. I found some things. And um, if, you know, uh, I'd be happy to take care of them. You were all right with that? Here's what I would suggest. You probably have the faculties to do this better than I. If you could route them into a fake system and leave them there so that they think that they're in, but they're really not. Give them a, a honeypot. Ooh, I like that idea. All right. Yeah, I can make one of those real quick. Awesome. That's a great idea. All right, Mordex, let's see that computer's role to, to perform this. Can I assist? Does Absco want to help me yes, with that? Yes, I, I will assist as well. <laughs> All right. Much Yo's assistance. It's just going to look pretty. <laughs> so it's plus All right. Four. I got a 27, so that's 31. Okay. You're able to quarantine the worms in a completely separate image of the uh, hard drive while Perfect. having blocked any real access to anything referencing the Starfinder Society. I think because Mordax is sometimes a little bit sassy, uh, she would have put a little bit of like, you know in this space, you know, just like an excessive amount of her, you know, key and soap opera stuff. Uh, <laughs> files in there. Nice. Yes. That's what you replaced all the Starfinder stuff with so that the final uh, data count came out right. Brilliant. Every episode. <laughs> and everyone else's personal logs. Just all of them. <laughs> yes. All the logs. Just overload it with data. Okay. Well done. Well done. I think that went about as well as could be expected. I looked at Absco. I think we may need to see about getting her a replacement ship, because that could get ugly. As far as I know, the Zephyr's still on Absalom Station, correct? No, no it was taken to par for parts. Oh. Jay told us. Well, we've taken it for scrap. Maybe we call in a favor to the Starfinders. Yeah, that makes sense. We should do that. I, I will take care of that. All right. Well, Mordax, Eos, you have now met 18. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Angus laughing. That's brilliant. I think that's the first time Eos has ever expressed anything so succinctly. And that's lovely. I think they look really cool. Oh, they're beautiful. Please don't be another one. We had a previous crewmate who, who went on some very awkward first love dates that did not go well. I don't need any more of that with this one. Oh, no. I really like, you know, mechanical things, but I'm, I, I, 
No. Okay. It's just that's, that's just a relief. Well, what do we take away from this? That she's queen of the school of passive aggressive. I was thinking more about where we are and what. I think we need to get off this rock as quickly as we can. She's on to, she's suspicious of why we're here, clearly, and I, is going to be looking at us harder from, it seems like. Yeah, but at, at the a, same time, you know, I think that they were kind of like, why are you here? That doesn't make any sense. Like, like they think that, like, they actually kind of don't really want us here. So there's probably something to find. Can I roll a sense motive, like, retroactively from having collated the data of that conversation? Sure. Just a little sense motive for a hunch. Yeah. You see what kind of gut to, feeling you get. Can I roll aid another to assist with that? Just because we're talking about it and jogging their memory. Sure. <laughs> Since I only got a 14. Well, I rolled a 16 to help. So you have a 16. Android, it's harder for you to tell exactly mm-hmm. what they're saying because the inflections all flatter. Um, and a lot of the, the facial expressions that 18 was making were overblown. Like, yeah. just a little too much, hmm. which makes it hard to get a, a, a delicate read. Um, yeah. No, I mean, you don't Do get you want to know what feelings. I was trying to figure out? <laughs> Would that help What are you, you trying to figure out? I was listening to that conversation, and A, she's obviously, I felt like she was fishing for information. Like, clearly she wanted to know why we were here and what we knew. We must yes. be close to something she doesn't want us to know. But I wanted to see if any of that read in the conversation. Like, was she uncomfortable? Was she, you know? Oh, you got the idea that she was that she was fishing here for information, but that that she was also you got the impression that she was testing you a little bit, seeing how honest you were being with her. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, leaving the like drop of like, I know exactly what the fuck you're doing. Let's see how much you're going to tell me that you're doing. Something like that. Yeah. How do we do? <laughs> <laughs> the the gut feeling that you get is that you did pretty well. That if she was concerned about you being here for a particular reason, she doesn't suspect that you are here for that particular reason. Okay. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, a little, a little out of game. Androids also have that negative to sensing motive the other way as well. Mm. Yes. Okay. Androids I... can't figure out all this emoting. They don't get sarcasm. All right. All right. Yes. So okay. you have had your conversation with Solomon. Where to now? Um, I uh. wonder, since we're all gathered, and I assume Eos just came from the med bay, would she have an update on George? Bring that back George around? is recovering nicely. Uh, he has begun his rehab, his rehab work. So he woke he, up. He grumbles at you. He gr- yes, he grumbles at you a lot. <laughs> yeah, Eos can take it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that feels so anticlimactic to me. Wait, he's awake? And this. Like, oh, yeah, by the well, way, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, no, he was going to be fine. You, you guys had him. You guys knew he was stable and going to be fine. It was just going to take him time. Well, Ooh. yes, but four days ago, he wasn't even awake yet. And we didn't know when he was going to wake up or if any of his mental faculties were affected. George wakes up. <laughs> George, George, is, George is very happy to be awake and alive. George does not seem to suffer any permanent brain damage. I imagine Absco would go in there like as soon as like they know that he's awake and brings in like a, a comms device for the whole ship that has video. And it's just like, here, speak to the crew. They want to hear from you. Like immediately as soon as like he's just like, you know, maybe wall eyed and like, what's going on? <laughs> uh, hi. Yeah. This is our hero, everyone. This Mm -hmm. is a hero. (laughs) Wow. George just blushes and and promptly tries to pass back out. I think our next step is we've landed here. I think what we need to do is get to wherever they store their information. So, Abdul, can you work with EOS to see if you can discover if the Unification Cathedral or the Theology Channel is where we need to go to look up information on 18 and Eve. Those are the two places I think we need to focus our attention right now. Uh, yeah. So Absco would like to spend a minute on their data pad and do a culture check. Just look through okay. local records and things like that. Uh, that is a 21. I'm going to assist okay. from EOS's memory, and that's a 17. Well, with the plus two... 19. So that's a okay. plus two. You, your data pad, you look it up and you find several libraries here in the Undercity of Striving. Okay. Which seem to be more 
theologically based, I guess. Or maybe which ones are more focused on the first one? There's yeah. there's one attached to the Unification Cathedral. Uh, if you're looking for first ones, a search of first ones shows a lot of information about these different settlements that are belo- believed to have been part of the first or to have been uh, settlements of the first ones. These old mm-hmm. abandoned cities. They're the blue dots you see around the, the map here. Uh, and it seems that all you have to do to enter the cities... Well, it seems that Anasites are not allowed to enter the cities of the first ones. That only offworlders can enter these sites. And so they hire them out as adventuring crews to go mm-hmm. check out these uh, these abandoned cities. Interesting. Are we looking at a map right now, potentially? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absco and Eos is going to point at the map, if it's labeled anything like the one we're looking at, Mm -hmm. didn't the information we got from the first ones mention a timeless? That sounds familiar. And it's just right outside of uh, striving. Yes. So maybe after we go over to the theology channel, we make a pit stop on the way back. Well, Let's let's see if we can meet up with someone who knows a little bit better than us and see if we can get a guide. Yeah. An official dispatch out. These are some solid plans. Let's get on that. and Let's get moving. Angus is feeling a little bit of urgency now that Solomon has actually reached out <laughs> and knows yeah. exactly who we are and our crew compliment. <laughs> like, I don't know that our lives will last all that long. So, yeah. Look at us. As you plans. exit the ship, you conveniently find a terminal <laughs> where you can print up a, uh, a thing that will allow you to go out to visit one of these cities. Oh, wow. Print, not download. <laughs> it's on paper. <laughs> It's not on paper. Well, it, it is kind of on paper. See the the rock that this is made out of. They have to strip a lot of the rock away to get down to the iron and stuff there. So it's stone paper. It's actually <laughs> cheaper to make than data for them. Nice. Okay. So that is super fl- cool. <laughs> Flintstone style paper tablets, but flexible. No, have you have you never seen stone paper? No, never heard no. Of it. it's no. just like paper, but it's made from crushed stone. Ooh, that's a real and thing? it's just like thick paper. Yeah, it's a real thing. Like you can get tablets and it's waterproof. Uh, there's yep. definitely a stone Google paper. Search. Look it up. There's I a whole company that does paper made of stone. Function. It's just like notebook paper. So, yes, let us do the things. We're, we're doing the things. Um, all right. So since we came down and uh, nearer to striving, let's head to the Unification Cathedral. I don't know that I want to head over to the Theology Channel. That sounds a little bit too abstract. The Unification Cathedral, you see three immense pyramidal spires rising up, 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 up into the sky, dominating the skyline of the area. That is the Unification Cathedral, the Church of Triune, the headquarters right here. Well, this just seems too obvious. When you have a lack of information, go with the obvious and work your way backwards, I think. Let's just see what we can find. I mean, she did seem uncomfortable that we were here, so... Ms. Obsco, do you have any connections here? I can find out. Let me look through my data pad and can I roll um, my profession? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a 30. Woo! <laughs> that is a 30. What exactly were you looking for? Um, um, I, I would say an industry contact. So maybe someone from uh, Avatar, uh, from the Church of Avatar or something that I can rely on for information. Okay. Okay. Or exploit for information. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You have to go to the theology channel, but there is a church of Abadar there. Ooh. Or there is an outpost of Abadar Corp. <laughs> I should is more how they have it. All right. So a branch. That's what it is. There is a branch, a branch of, the, of a, Abadar Corp. A branch. A church. local branch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a local branch of Abadar Corp. A holy branch of Abadar Corp in the theology channel. And Angus. You, okay. You know what? With that profession, yeah. you know the priest there. Okay. Um I know that I said that the Unification Cathedral would be the best place to go, but in looking through my records here, I do know a priest in the Theology Channel. They're in the Church of Abadar. They might be able to point us in the right direction if I can get a little bit of information out of them. And we in a storm. Let's go. We're going to need to navigate to the Theology Channel as well. That is easily done as you follow the signs to the Theology Channel. 
I'm just imagining as we're walking that Mordax is kind of looking around like a kid in a candy shop. Mordax, as y'all are leaving the ship and you begin heading through the Unification Cathedral, this is something unlike anything you've ever seen before. Everything around you is has this cool mechanical design to it, like a computer chip. Teeming the streets are not living creatures like you're used to, but what seem to be robots. But each robot is a complete thinking separate individual. I feel like if we were if we were watching this any sort of visual medium, it would be like Mordax's face immediately turns into like that giant eyed, like anime sparkle <laughs> eye thing. <laughs> Just looking around like this is this is great. Is she plotting to give Silverblade more sentience? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, Silverblade has Silverblade is a complete AI. I think more she's probably going around just taking notes about like cool upgrades she could probably <laughs> give to Silverblade. Nice. <laughs> oh, it would look really neat if it I gives you some it. ideas. Yeah. But some of the tech you're seeing is just there's no basis for it. There's nothing to compare it to. How close are these beings to androids? These beings are physically quite different from androids in their composition and configuration but intelligence wise and so on they basically are androids they're complete thing they just can't speak common yeah i think absco is kind of marveling as well Uh, they really appreciate the modularity of these beings and they team almost like insects the way they move with complete orderly fashion and just like spreading out around you in the street as you stand and gawk and then you know coming back around like like a stream of ants just constantly on the go 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 tirelessly working going about whatever it is they do i feel like as they're like traversing from where the ship is to the theology channel like eos and angus are just on a mission they're (laughs) going and every now and again eos is looking back because mordax has stopped and is looking at something and then they get another like couple blocks and then angus is sorry absco has stopped to (laughs) look at something else and they just kind of keep or like the both of them will stop at one point and then they're like chittering away about like some cool tech thing that i can't can't think of that they but i could just yeah yeah mordax is taking oh yeah copious amounts of notes she's just got her data pad out just like or her custom rig thing out and just tap 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 i I think that absco points out things to be like oh mordax look over there (laughs) oh golly i didn't wow how many limbs do you think that is (laughs) i feel like eventually eos goes from following angus to being behind them (laughs) To kind of hurting them, them like nice. say it. I know you want to say it. I'm gonna give it to you, Miu. You started to say it. Go ahead. Hurt them like a like a dog. Uh, mm-hmm. Get behind them. Mm. Give them give the herd. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, you know, this is this is other races. This is how it it goes. Sometimes there is yes. a baser nature. Fair enough. You're not so far removed from your from your evolutionary roots. And this is good too because I feel like uh, Absco and Mordax have not actually had time to nerd out about some of their shared interests yet. Yeah, I agree. Well, you have a few hours as you traipse <laughs> through the uh, the Unification <laughs> Cathedral and into Theology Channel. I, uh, yeah, the Theology I'm, I'm, Channel here. I imagine that Angus is just like, come on. <laughs> Uh, uh, by the way, is, just just to put into just to put this into perspective, this megaplex population: one hundred fifty-two million, sixty-five percent anasite, eighteen percent android, thirteen percent human, four percent other. Wow! So we stick out really badly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, one hundred fifty-two million, and sixty-five percent of them are anasite, eighteen percent are android. Yeah. Okay, and let me. But say- you find that the theology channel has a lot more geared toward organic beings. Okay. Angus has a pretty strong engineering, so, you know, screw you thinking he would be excited to be in here. <laughs> the only reason, <laughs> let me defend myself, that I guessed that he wouldn't was that you had mentioned wanting to get off the planet as quickly as possible. That doesn't mean I wouldn't be excited by it. That's like saying I want to get out of this candy store as quickly as possible. I'm still going to be looking at all the candy as I walk. Okay. So, so Angus is the only, so instead of it being Angus rolling there, his eyes, it's going to be Eo because she, there's nothing here for her. She's actually kind of uncomfortable while you guys are here. But you know, Angus, I mean, it's part of the problem with being the leader. Like you're suddenly like our dad and it's just not cool to nerd out with you. 
unaware. <laughs> that was almost a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, though. I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to interject myself into the nerding out. I'm enjoying my time. But I am also, I'd like to do a perception check because I am extremely <laughs> paranoid with so many mm. androids around based on where we met Solomon. Just to see if any of them are failing their charisma checks at hiding, you know, observe. Okay. That. Can I assist okay. with my fancy eyes? I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, actually, if your perception's better, I would tell you to do it, and I will assist <laughs> you. Well, let me double check what my I've got a plus nine. Yours is better by one, so here's my assistance. There's a 19. You got it. Or 21, whatever. To a, to a 23. <laughs> so 25 is your roll. Yes. 25. You find yourselves both just staring at every android that is within sight. They seem to be somewhat uncomfortable as a number of them just stare back at you pointedly. <laughs> I would like to think we're better uh, but, than that, but I don't think we're better than that. <laughs> Not really, no. My career is really high. Eos and Angus, though, you're pretty sure that, that you're just making a spectacle of yourself and that you are not actually being spied upon by any of the androids that you see at the moment. No. Yes, we're, awesome. we're a parade of fleshies. <laughs> well, Definitely and, look like you just got off the boat. Well, and plus with Eos's augments, if anybody like tries to get a beat on them with lasers and stuff, she can see that too. Just you see nobody... Getting a beat on you with lasers, you paranoid puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just throwing it out there because we're on a planet where it's, you know, the majority of the population is mechanical. Well, let she me has just all say. these fucking seats. <laughs> I can just see her being like, red dot, red dot, red dot, red dot, red. There's red dots everywhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> just like a cat with a laser pointer in? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it. She's not a cat. <laughs> Oh, dogs are almost worse. Oh, yeah. Are they? Mm -hmm. They oh, get yeah. focused. They get focused like I am getting that dot. And they will dig at the ground and oh my gosh. When Kenny called us fleshies, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> On an android-like planet, of course they would have fleshies as their perversion. Oh. Ew. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's See, not, it oh. Oh. Look at I mean, Edgar wearing that skin suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you meant. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it, puts, it puts the lotion on its skin. Oh. Or it gets the hose. Oh, oh man. Okay. You get to the theology channel where there are... No, you get to the theology channel where there are a lot of... Uh, cathedrals and things. <laughs> Holy things. <laughs> go straight to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You dirty, dirty people. <laughs> All right. We, we, you guys get to the theology channel. There are hundreds of cathedrals, chapels, and churches dedicated to the various religions of the packed worlds. Uh, you see strange beings that look like flowers with fangs being depicted on some of these. And people are dancing around in these flowers and there's a weird smell of like rotten meat coming from their temple uh Ooh. you find one that is dedicated to a, a crystal deity where everyone has a crystal embedded in their forehead and they all walk around with their fingers at their head going <laughs> you you see one where people just run around naked playing tag <laughs> I, 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 you have no idea about this, God. This is weird, but it's like some ritual that they do. Uh, you find a large cathedral to Serenray and one to Desna. And yes, a very large mega Abadar corp. I picture it like a mall <laughs> <laughs> yes, with corporate offices on top. <laughs> it is a mall with corporate offices on top. And in fact, today is the, the holiest of Abadarian holidays, Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is 50% off. Once you boba. Of its previously <laughs> marked up 150% yeah. and made with less quality materials. So it will break by now. Yes. Perfect. Yes. That, that's part of the, the tradition here. Awesome. <laughs> mindless, mindless consumerism. It's mindless consumerism day. Okay. Uh, so who is my contact there? Uh, your contact is the regional holy manager. His holy regional manager. <laughs> Miller, Miller Wyatt. It, can it can it be Miller Roebuck? Yes, it can be Miller Roebuck. Absolutely. All right. Are are they an android? No, I they're a human. I wouldn't, yeah. 
from Absalom Station. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> it's Miller Roebuck from Absalom Station. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. He makes a mean oh. baked dish, don't you know? Oh, you were gosh. investigating that corporate boat host. <laughs> <laughs> uh so I turn to the to the group and I say, Well, um I don't see why you all wouldn't be able to come with me. Um we should go into the mall and uh, head for the corporate offices. I know that his holy regional manager, Miller Roebuck, would want to probably exchange some coin with all of us. Is that your way of saying we should have a bribe ready? No, it's a transaction. Don't be gross. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Prime <laughs> Absco sass. Wow. Because uh, Absco, you're part of the. Are are, are you a I, worshiper I'm, I'm of a Abadar? I, I'm a worshiper of Abadar. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. Excellent. Yes. Ooh. It's a transaction. <laughs> Don't be gross. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so we, we enter the, the mall. I, I imagine it's kind of laid out kind of like a really bad casino that's like, you know, blind corners everywhere, no clocks, lots of neon lights, and like just vendors everywhere. Yes. Yes, all of that. It is like they put the Las Vegas Strip inside a mall. I imagine that like there's like incense in the air where it kind of tricks your pheromones into wanting to buy, to consume. Are there yes, hawkers? Absolutely. <laughs> So I, I'm like, pay no mind to these petty vendors. They're all lower. You really want to exchange the coin with some of the business leaders. They're the ones who will grant you the most fervor. Anything really to get you closer to Abadar. Look, Absco, it's your contact. You know what's going on. Just lead us through what we have to do. Do we have to just give you... Oh, well, jingle <laughs> my coin purse. Is oh, that geez. Absco cash? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> His holy regional manager. Is that you? Oh, please. I told you last time. You can just call me Miller. Oh, Miller Roebuck. You know me better than that. I cannot dispatch with all of these pleasantries. Oh, oh, I suppose so. Okay. Investigator Absco Cash. Yes, your holiness. And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a cred stick and he hands it to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, now you are to like hand it back to him. I accept it. I inspect it. And I say, mm -hmm. what's the return percentage on this? Well, 15%. Hmm. I think you undersell yourself. And I give him the credit stick back with the 20% increase. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Puts it in his pocket. He goes, blessings of Abadar upon you. Uh, I assume you have come here to talk business, yes? Oh, everything's a transaction. Oh, of course, of course. Let's, let's go get down to negotiations. Oh, please. Let us. And, and you are ushered into what looks like a car salesman's office. A desk and four cramped chairs kind of squeezed up with each other as he has a, a, a chair behind his desk with a computer and a bunch of contracts laid out on the table. Neon lights, bad smelling coffee. Mm hmm. Oh, well, so what can I do for you? Um, we need to be pointed in the direction of some information that I believe you are uniquely able to provide us. And what kind of information would you be looking for now? Well, um, we are here to go to one of the ancient cities. Uh huh. Uh huh. Captain, this is my Captain Angus. He will be helping broker this transaction. Angus, oh, can you hi, give him Captain Angus. Reach out, shake your hand. I shake their hand, and do they have a credit? Oh, stick? blessings of Abadar upon you, my child. Okay. <laughs> Just stay quiet. May your cred stick always be full. To you as well. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm, uh, this is going to be so hard. I cannot do this without going into the same accent, so I'm just going to stay as quiet as possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, His Holiness needs a, a few more parameters for this transaction to be complete. Can you give him a little bit of quality detail on the sort of information he's going to be selling to us. I look at you and I, I toss you the the look of how well can this person be trusted? Like, and I, I look at you and I hold up a couple of coin uh, cred sticks and I say, really anything can be bought. It's true, don't you know? Oh, this accent's <laughs> going to kill me. <laughs> no, my accent's not um, good as is. Mordax is just real quick and I'm going to tug on Eos's sleeve and sort of gesture in that, that's like, that's what I'm looking for. lean down here because I have something to say to you. <laughs> hand motion. And Eos is actually going to put her hand on Mordax's shoulder and initiate a mind link. So, <laughs> <laughs> and just like, what's up? 
<laughs> so in your head, Mordax, you just hear EOS go, what's up? Space consent is sexy is all I have to <laughs> <laughs> Chip, yeah, I, I didn't ask this time. So. Um, Mordex I, has fair. absolutely no idea how this works, so Mordex is just gonna gonna whisper with her mouth because she doesn't understand. Oh, um, well, well, that was weird. Um, but I don't, I don't think I can participate in this because I, I don't have a really many many credits. So, um, I'm gonna stay real quiet. Okay, you'll be fine. I was planning on letting Abs go and Angus do a talking. You're talking in my head. That's weird. I'm sorry. It's a mystic perk. All right. I'll stop. <laughs> and she takes her hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a lot weirder than Mordax was expecting. <laughs> I, was going for, I was going for subtle and... <laughs> Have you been just, taking lessons from Kenny on how to behave awkwardly with people? <laughs> holy smokes. Me? No. Me? Stuff. I, I mean, am naturally awkward. You you don't understand. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I'm okay. not the color of my shirt. Oh, so, so what kind of information are you looking for now? We're looking for information on two fairly ancient beings. One, a silver dragon, name of Eve. One, named wait one moment uh here is a down payment on some confidence and confidentiality oh, okay yep y'all 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 you can go cover the confidentiality contract yeah here we go pulls it up it's, on his dad pal i'm gonna need your signature here and then i'm gonna need your your thumbprint there and and uh, you too captain angus this has to be while it is a complete transaction we need to try to keep our names off of it Oh, oh, you need the anonymous form. I got you there. <laughs> he pulls out the form of anonymity and goes, okay, so you just need to sign here and put your thumbprint here. And then this will be put in our sort of, uh, secure server under triple bit encryption. Uh, trust me, it's fine. It just verifies that, that, that you're the one that signed everything else. It generates a number for you. You know, it's all, you know how this goes. Fantastic. And Absco goes through the ceremony. There, there's the form of anonymity, followed by the form of confidentiality, followed by the form of good faith, uh, the, the receipt for the acceptance of payment for the forms and the filing of the forms, and and then there's the the separate form for filing the forms, and and then you're good to go. If we're not too uh, careful, this is going to start rolling into like the rules of acquisition, which we right. need to kind of stay away from. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fair. And so I would, after all the forms are signed and Absco has assured me that this is as is, is close to private as we're going to get, I will say the entity known as Eve and the entity known as 18. Both of them, apparently there's a reference to being in the city of Timeless here. And we would like to get the information you have on them and go and explore the city. Okay, well, uh, you're going to have to give me a little bit to get some information, but uh, I can get you set up with uh, an expedition out to Timeless if you would like. Uh, I, I got to tell you, not many people like to go out that that way. Wow, what happened to his voice? <laughs> <laughs> this is his serious voice, his business voice. I'll tell you, people people don't go out that way. <laughs> Just all of a sudden, he's godfathering it. No, uh, he tells you that, that people don't generally go to Timeless uh, because, well, no one's actually made it into Timeless. There are non anasite mechanical beings that guard it constantly and don't let anyone in. Oh, but you know, Your Holiness, we have our ways. As long as we have all of the documentation allowing us to, let us handle the getting in and out part. All right. He will have that ready for you tomorrow. There are more forms, handshaking, more forms, handshaking, exchanging of credits back and forth, uh, haggling over rebates, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> all of the uh, pleasantries are taken care of and you leave with a timeshare. <laughs> 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 officially officially that is your contract to timeless is a timeshare <laughs> that is disgusting i love it welcome to the church of abadar is there anything yep. else we have to do while we're here i mean weren't we gonna hit the library since we have to wait for additional information see if we can find anything on our own sure lead on okay all right what are you going to look up at the library what do you want to know well a lot of the information that we've gotten so far are religious texts so maybe trying to cross-reference what information we can find out about the cult that worships Eve. See if we can get information on both of them, since they've both been mentioned being here. True. Okay, and give me a computer's to... check to search the files and cross-reference everything. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, why don't you assist? Unless you have a better skill that you think would be more appropriate. Am I doing it? 
<laughs> yeah, because I've got a plus three. Um, the only other skill I could think that would be applicable would be culture, which isn't much better at a plus six. No, I I, I picture Eos sitting there being like, so so we should cross reference stuff, right? Like like. Yeah. The things with the libraries and how do you do that? Fair. I would look at Mordax and say, I think we can we can figure some of this out. And then I, I would offer to help you with a computer's check to see find anything on Eve and 18, whether it be starting through 18's dominant ownership in Abadar or Eve and their cult. I think focusing on Eve and their cult is a better way in case 18 is checking in on us after that call. Yeah. So you begin researching Eve, anything you can find on E, right? Yes. So here's my assistance roll. Okay. It's going to be an 18. So I give you plus two. Okay. Well, I only rolled an eight, so it's 21. So 23 total. 23. Uh, So with 23, you can find, you find one reference to Eve from the same text that you were given on the on the pad, except this one has something a little bit different. This time, instead of them just fighting in Timeless, they're fighting in Timeless, and yet there, there's a line, a pictograph line underneath that in the data that is a hook. Hmm. And it appears as though the city of Timeless is creating the hook. Oh, interesting. More- well, um, well, Mordax will happily relay that to Angus after very... Well, yeah, I'm assuming I'm... I'm- reading over your shoulder since I'm a citizen. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And so, yep. Mordax, see, let's try to track that angle down. We have not been looking at this. So let's let's look at the adventure hook specifically. All right. So here's another assistance, which is a 20. So you get plus two. Okay. Better roll, better roll, better roll. Ugh. 24. 24. Adventure hook doesn't turn up anything. As, as you're going through this hook, all you're finding is the stuff on Eos until you find, again, that that's a similar picture of a hook. The stuff timeless. on Eox? Eox, not Eos. <laughs> Thank you. Eox. <laughs> what you can find is the adventure hook program on Eox. And then you're able to find one more reference to a hook in relation to timeless, except... The, the, the character that's used here can be read as hook or key. Mm. Hmm. It looks like we've hit a dead end, but that's that's really interesting. Good work, Mordax. And, you know, we'll have been mumbling about that so everyone else can hear it as we're reading through stuff. Mm-hmm. So don't need to do much more of that. Right. You would recap with everyone. Well, we have a nice timeshare over in Endeavor. So that should be fun for some vacationing. Is that a separate check or are we just considering it all wrapped up i can throw it all together here with what you're looking at um 18 you don't get the the problem with 18 it is is it is so ubiquitous there was you know 18 numbers here yeah. are like names you know 18 sure. leads to too much stuff now if you if you if like you said you're cross-referencing timeless 18 eve mm-hmm. and this hook yeah you find one scrap in in the library in a book of myths, a book of creation myths that speaks of someone named 18 and someone named Eve fighting over a key that was made in Timeless. Okay. And it doesn't say why they were fighting. Before the, this, this was before, this is part of a creation myth for the Anasites. Okay. This is just mentioned, like, it's like, it's like a line buried in the Silmarillion. You know, you're, there's just like one line about it, like, boom. Yeah, and Eve and 18 fought over the key in Timeless. I feel like we found everything there is to find here. So, well, let's get ready and, you know, get rested so that we can go on this thing to Timeless. Because I'm ready to get, I'm ready to get to somewhere where we can get some more information. So... I agree. Oh, good. Uh, let's. But let's go. Yeah. The next day, you're able to get. Uh, when, when you get up, you have a message that uh, your contact is ready for you back at the Cathedral of Abadar. He has whatever information they have. Okay. As well as papers that will allow you to pass out. You know, go out there. Uh, he can't guarantee you entry into Timeless because mm-hmm. the non-anasite creatures are not under their control. Mm-hmm. What can you tell us about these? But creatures? he can. They're like anasites, but more. They seem to have this sort of silvery, scaly substance mm-hmm. that makes up their their armor, their 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 chitinous outer plating. Can you tell us if they have any immunities or anything that we need to be worried about there if it comes to a fight? It sounds like it comes to a fight. Well, we've never been able to even hurt them. Oh. Well, that's not good. Nobody has. Nobody's been able to sneak past them either. Well then, that would be interesting. Yeah. I feel like at the words sneak, I would sort of side-eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I think everyone but, is side eyeing Absco. But <laughs> everything that they have on eighteen and Eve, he hands you some papers and he goes and, and the priest tells you, you know, I really should charge you more because you had me looking into this 18 and 18's someone that's uh, a little little close to home, if you know what I mean. But I think you already knew that. Absco. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when we negotiate at Absco. Yeah. <laughs> you negotiated the contract very well and we negotiated our end pretty well, I would say. Oh, yeah. Did Abadar proud there you did. Oh, thank you, Father. I feel so close to him right now. Oh, you should. You should. Okay, here you go. Here's all we got. So there's lots of information about 18. About 18 becoming the CEO and minutes and orders and you have all kinds of stuff on 18. All kinds of corporate documents. Yay. CEO of what? Uh, Abadar Corp. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they have all right. interest. Hmm. 18 is CEO of Abadar Corp. And there's records stretching back pre-gap that just mention 18 at a branch here at this at, at this place and a branch there at this place. Even before, uh, as a matter of fact, as you look through, 18 is a charter member of the Abadar Corporation that was mm. formed when the Church of Abadar Incorporated. Wow. All right. But again, you find that Timeless has many factories like many of these cities do, uh, that both the predecessor cities and the the newer cities but no one's ever been able to get into timeless to see what they were manufacturing well there is I, a tale of two ancient uh, of an ancient mechanical being and an ancient scaled being fighting over a key uh it is said that the scaled being set up guardians to keep the mechanical being out interesting and it is it is said in this in this myth that a time will come when timeless will yield up another key mm. So we have some decisions to make. How hmm, I want to be a little bit more thoughtful before we proceed, given our previous engagement. If what we're going to do is go into timeless, are we just going to pave the path for Solomon to come in as well? That was my concern. Mm-hmm. Here's another question that I don't know if we've maybe you've considered it and I just don't know. What do we actually know about Eve in terms of her motivations? Like, did she interrupt all of you in getting the adventure hook because she just saw you as agents of Solomon? Is she actually a guardian of something and we should actually be siding with her? Currently, let's be clear. All these questions and more to be answered next time. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that brings us to the end of our time for today. So, for experience points, I'm Miyu. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at MiyuPlaysGames. I'm Kelric the Eternally Frustrated. You can find me on Twitter at EQPoints and at Cormalon. Uh, I'm Brit, and I'm really wondering what this freaking key is for. And I'm Atomic Firebird. Not Atomic Firebird. <laughs> <laughs> my brain. Just so much, lots of thoughts. I'm, I'm Kenny, and Abadar bless you. You can find me on Twitter <laughs> at Punderdrone. Uh, I am Steph, the ever contemplative storyteller and unraveler of knots or revealing of them. Um, you <sighs> can find me at Luna Starwind on Twitter. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! you want to hear some new and veteran-ish players as they dive into a completely homebrew world created by our talent DM Liam? Then join us for an old school authentic D&D experience as we focus on collaborative storytelling in an open world, allowing us as players to cause as much anxiety as possible for our DM. Catch us on most podcast platforms, visit our website, and come chat to us on social media. Modified Rule, come and join the adventure.